Hello and welcome everyone to the webinar How to Educate Through Tree Planting Activities for Climate Action. This webinar is part of the Terra Mission, Teaching Sustainability for Action MOOC. My name is Miriam Molina and on behalf of the Life Terra Project and Scientix team, I would like to thank you all for joining us. My colleagues, Julia Lotin and Maria Dios, are also attending and supporting this session. If you experience any technical issues, please leave us a message in the box. In this webinar, our speakers will discuss about why planting trees is important and give practical examples on how to plant, how to plant the right tree in the right place. So today with us, we have Aroa Gregory, Teresa Sauras and Crystal Moore. Aroa Gregory works as a coordinator of the Education Working Group at the Life Terra Foundation. She's also involved in the implementation of the Life Terra project in Spain, organizing and leading tree planting events with citizens and school children at Volterra Ecosystems. Associate Professor Teresa Sauras is a biologist in the Faculty of Biology at the University of Barcelona. She has focused her research primarily in soil fertility, plant physiology and forest ecology. She uses the knowledge from basic research to develop nature-based solutions to cope with environmental issues. Professor Teresa provides the Life Terra project with the best scientific knowledge in ecosystem and landscape restoration. And finally, our third speaker, Crystal Moore, is a pre-doctoral researcher at the University of Barcelona, where she's currently obtaining her PhD in the Department of Evolutionary Biology, Ecology and Environmental Sciences. Her PhD is through the Life Terra project and she works in the intersection of social and environmental sciences analyzing behavior change and effective communication of environmental issues. And before I pass the floor to our speakers, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. First, please make sure that your sound is turned on and we would like to remind you that during this webinar, your cameras and microphones are going to be off. Secondly, thank you for posting your questions in the course in advance. We got many, many questions, but if you have any additional questions, please post them in the chat and we are going to collect them and address them at the end. This chat is recorded and we will publish it in the course so you can revisit and watch it again if you wish. And now without further ado, Aroa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Miriam, and thanks for such a great introduction. Um, thank you also to our colleagues from the European Schoolnet and Scientix to make this great MOOC possible. Um, my name is Aroa and I will give you um, first of all a short interview, uh, sorry, overview about the Life Terra project that I'm sure you at this point are already familiar with. So Life Terra is a European initiative with the mission to restore our connection with the earth and to enable people to take impactful climate action now. How do we do this? We facilitate tree planting, we educate future generations, and also we develop tree monitoring technology. Life Terra aims at planting 500 million trees, which is a symbolic number because we are 500 million people or citizens in Europe, so that would mean one tree per and for one person. Our motto is plant trees, grow forests, and restore earth. But we are not just another tree planting initiative, and this is what makes us really unique. First, we plant the right tree in the right place and also for the right purpose, sharing knowledge and expertise. Also, we monitor and track every single tree we plant thanks to our unique platform to tag your tree that we will be talking about it uh, later on. Also, as you know, we have a, an educational program that um, in which you are involved to educate future and all generations about sustainability and climate change. And at the end, we want to create this green movement and to engage the whole community in tree planting for large scale positive impacts. And how do we do this? We are proud to work with a consortium of 16 partners or organizations from eight different European countries that bring together expertise, knowledge and all their network in these four pillars that we are working on, which is implementation, the planting itself, also the technological part of the project, the communications and our focus here, the education. 
for that, or we are also supported by the European Commission through their LIFE program. And for this education focus, we work with the University of Barcelona. We have here our colleagues, Tere and Crystal, the European Schoolnet, and also Ginzi. LIFE Terra is aligned with a number of, well, six um, of the 17 UN Sustainable Development, Development Goals. And here I'd like to briefly share with you a few achievements um, with which we have already um, met in one and a half years of the project. Uh, we have planted already with about 7,500 volunteers we, who were involved in more than 130 tree planting events or activities that took place in nine different countries in Europe. We have also <clears throat> Uh, engaged more than 1,300 teachers from 30 different countries who are interested as yourself in, in our activities and our mission, engaging potentially about 20,000 students. And finally, we have trained more than 100 Terra leaders that we will explain to you later on what that means. And uh, yeah, all together we have planted more than 225,000 trees. These are not final numbers because we are still in the middle of the tree planting season. We will finish in, in summer and update this, this number. So we keep working on that and we are looking forward to keep growing together with you and your collaboration. So um, now I give the floor to my colleague Tere from University of Barcelona, who will explain you more about why trees and which trees are the correct ones. Thank you very much. So thank you, Aroa. Good afternoon, everyone. So my talk is about planting trees, restoring ecosystems and climate action. So when we talk about planting trees, we are not talking just about trees, but also about ecosystem, ecosystem processes and with a long term goal. So when we start a project of planting trees, it's a long term project. Some of the first questions we can address in our project is why we are planting trees and which trees we want to plant or we plan to plant. No, first, first, uh, first is that because um, climate change benefits from trees and from forest. So trees are very good uh, um, absorbing carbon, so helping to the climate change. But we need selecting tree species to plant in the European Union or in Europe. So this is a vast terrain. So with a lot of uh, climatic um, conditions different we are different countries you are living in different countries so we need um, to know which criteria we are going to follow where to find information just to plan just to avoid so these are some also some challenges we we are dealing with and in the end it's very important to monitor the planted trees as Aroa also said in the beginning and this is because the trees are a long-lived organisms, so they need time to grow, time to store carbon, and we have keep these trees at least for a 40 years. So, as we are talking about climate change and we are facing this climate crisis, let me introduce a bit about uh, the the climate um, climate change, as you know, and. You probably know that the atmospheric CO2 concentration is, is, keep, is keeping rising from year to year. And nowadays, we are um, nearly 4 and 20 ppm of CO2 in the atmosphere. And this is mainly due to the use of fossil carbon sources like coal, oil, gas, and others, such as uh, cement or concrete. So the, these are the main responsible or the main sources for the increasing of CO2 in the, in the atmosphere. So this increasing of CO2 in the atmosphere is, is uh, warming, or is, is making this greenhouse layer in the atmosphere that is trapping energy and is um, warming the planet. How much is going the planet to warm? We know that the temperature is increasing year by year. 
we have been we have been having the last the hottest years uh, in the last seven years. So how much? So we don't know yet. We are lucky because the future is not written, and we can we can um, reduce our emissions. So depending on whether we continue emitting CO2 as we are doing by now, we will get a very warm <laughs> planet that is in this in this uh, scenario of in red. You will see in red where the emissions are rising, but we can change our emissions, reduce a lot, or maybe uh, to, to keep a little bit cooler the, the planet, or even uh, le uh, cooler than was before in the with the blue blue scenario. So these are estimations. So there are many things to do, but we have to take into account and keep in mind that we are living in a transient climate. So this is important when planting trees because trees will will be growing in another climate different than the climate we have now. So, but planting trees is one of our actions to fight climate ac climate uh, change because by planting trees we can build up the carbon stocks while restoring ecosystems. So. Trees are very efficient um, capturing carbon because they are uh, doing photosynthesis, as you know, it was absorbing carbon while releasing oxygen to the to the earth, and this this CO2 is transformed in organic carbon and is stored in the different growing parts of the tree. That means in the root, in the trunk, in the crown. So. They are efficient building, building up carbon stocks, but we need to choose the appropriate species for the different environmental conditions we have in Europe. And we need also to select different plant traits for different environmental conditions. So in addition of capturing carbon, we need to consider other, other issues. If we look at the ecosystem level, we see that forests, Mm, absorb CO2. This, they also forest respire and are emitting some CO2. And these are also acc accumulating organic carbon in the soil through the dead organic matter that li uh, leaves, roots, or wood that is incorporated into the soil. So the growing of a forest is a long term process. And for each hectare or of restored land, we can capture about 2,000 tons of CO2 over a 40-year period. So, it's interesting. It's um, an important uh, stock in carbon, but it takes time. Okay, apart from capturing carbon, uh, we are restoring landscapes and ecosystem, not just planting trees. So it's, uh, it's now we are going to talk a little bit about how to select the, the trees, the tree species. So first of all, as a, as a, um, if we consider the planet, there are several biomes that we can um, find depending on the climate, mainly on the rainfall and average annual temperature. That means that we can have tropical rainforest in the very warm and wet uh, climates and taiga in the very north and cold Europe. So this is a first approximation, a very broad approximation, but then we can go in more detail to understand and to, to look for, for, for which type of trees we are going to plant. And if we look at Europe, we have several biogeographical regions, and if I see, if I say you, Mediterranean region, Atlantic region, continental, boreal, alpine. So probably some of you are living in one of these areas, and you probably figure out or now which forest ecosystem you have around you, and which trees are dominating this forest. So 
this is a more detailed um, information to, to select species. However, there is not mm, a unique recipe to choose the three species we are going to use, but there are some principles that we follow in life terra and in in, in general, in, in most of the projects, when, when, you are, when you are dealing with nature-based solutions, is that we always use native species. We are avoiding alien species. We plan to increase biodiversity, so, so we are using several tree species in every planting uh, project. But we also use a diversity of plant traits, that means you can use um, broadleaf trees or conifers or perennial, pre perennial trees or deciduous trees or most fast growing trees or more slow growing trees. You have a, mix, a mixing trees in a way that we are growing a resilient and biodiverse forest. That means prepare for the new climates and the new situation we are going to, to face in the future but not only climate, but other disturbances we can have, we can, we can get in the future and in the present. Like it can be forest fires, drought, uh, pests, diseases. So having diverse forests, we have more resilient systems. So as I told you, there is no a unique recipe to, to design a planting project. And I would say that every every planting project starts thinking and doing a little a little bit of research, and this is for everyone, and this is also for you in the schools. And I think I would suggest that is a a nice um, starting to do a class research project in where you can uh, in research a little bit about the climate in your city, in your region, or where you are going to plant. Also looking for the geology, geology, maybe soil type information, looking for information about vegetation in your neighborhood if you are going to plant near your school. Mm, doing some research about which are the main natural forests in your region or which are the dominant trees in the parks where you are living. So, Look for some experts to help you. Probably if you look around the school, you will meet some foresters or biologists or gardeners. And also a very important thing is that mm, mm, we need to use three species that are available for planting. That, that means that there will be professional people growing these small trees for us. So after once you have decided more or less which are the, the set of species you are going to use, is the time to, 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 to plan the planting. And I would suggest uh, going to the site, make a field trip, explore the terrain, look if there is, uh, how is the slope? Is this very steep? There are flat areas. How is the aspect north, south? Oh, there's, are there some streams there? Is there a, a lake or not? I don't know. So, and take profit and take time to learn about the environmental requirements of the species you are going to plant. It's very important to know the, the species because you get more engaged with this. So I will suggest uh, having a look to the European Atlas of Tree Species where you will find a lot of information for the, for, for also for kids about the habitat of every European tree about the, the products, the, the ecosystem services, the, the ecology, and it's nice information. So, but the, the planting or the project doesn't, doesn't finish after planting. It's not a matter of planting and that's all. As Aroa said also in the beginning, we are very interested in monitoring the, the, the process. So we are interested in monitoring the seedling, seedling survive, survival. That means you plant the trees, but we need the, the trees keeping alive. <laughs> so it's interesting to, to monitor the survival. It's also very important to monitor the tree growth and 
estimate the carbon stocks. If we estimate the tree growth, we can transform the biomass in carbon. So we, are, we know how much carbon we are capturing. And also, is, uh, this is, uh, I mean, the planting and the, the forest you are um, growing is a fantastic resource for teaching and learning in the coming years, I think, I guess. <laughs> So to finish, just to keep in mind some of our principles and challenges in the project that are transparency, biodiversity, the right tree in the right place. That means an ecosystem based approach, building ecosystems. Trees are not enough and probably Crystal will talk about this. We have seen that uh, we cannot halt the climate crisis just by planting trees, but can help. Knowledge is power. Sustainability, that means that the, plant, the, the planting will continue. I mean, the planting, the monitoring will continue in the future. We are engaged for to maintain alive the trees and to ensure that we are um, using all the carbon capture potential. And if possible, and um, we encourage you to use green procurement so your suppliers our suppliers that being organizations that have social and environmental goals in addition to their financial ones and that's all for my part so i give the floor to crystal that will help you to learn how to measure your own emissions thank you thank you tere um, yes, hi, good evening everyone. Um, my name is Crystal. So today I'm going to briefly talk to you about a tool that we're developing in the project to empower users to lower their individual emissions. Um, as we know, tree planting alone is not enough to halt climate change. We need people to take individual action to combat their carbon emissions. Um, in order to take action, people need to know what emissions are associated with their day-to-day -day actions. So I'll talk a little bit more about what those actions are a little later in the presentation. But firstly, what is a carbon footprint and what is a carbon footprint calculator? So a carbon footprint is the amount of carbon that we emit through our day-to-day -day activities. And as you might have already guessed, a carbon footprint calculator is an online tool that allows people to measure the impact of their activities. And then it also encourages people to make sustainable changes. Um, it's also a good tool to measure these changes over time. The tool shows um, users a numerical figure related to their activities. And it also explains whether the user is a low emitter, a medium emitter, or a high emitter. So our carbon footprint calculator is still currently under development, but we will share it once it has been completed and we will be encouraging all of you to take part. Um, so we developed a quantifiable calculation methodology for each question and answer so that we could obtain a, a representative value of a person's overall carbon footprint. These questions and their calculations were developed based on an extensive literature review and also a review of other available carbon footprint calculators. So our aims are firstly to gather data about user emissions and societal behaviours for the Life Terror project, we then want to encourage people to reduce their footprint um, and to offset their emissions by supporting the Life Terra project, either by adopting a tree or participating in planting events. And then lastly, we want to address the existing research and market gap. So basically what we did that others that other carbon footprint calculators haven't done, um, we added questions that they don't include, such as a wide range of vehicles, hidden footprints, recycling calculations, and so on and so forth. So what does that look like? Um, these are the five main categories of the carbon footprint calculator that we've developed. So firstly, we have transport. Um, so, for example, what means of transport are you taking to school every day? 
and how far are you travelling on that form of transport. The next is hidden footprints. So, for example, how long do you spend on social media every day? And yes, believe it or not, there is a um, carbon emission associated with that. Uh, the next is um, personal habits. So, for example, how often are you buying a school uniform and what material is that uniform made out of? The next is household. So, um, in a classroom, you could uh, let's say what type of electricity are you using and how often are you using it? What materials are the building made out of? And so on and so forth. Then in our last category, we have diet. So I'm going to show you an example of what our carbon footprint calculator looks like on the diet question. So as you can see, the question that we've asked is what does your typical diet consist of? And then we have a range of answers for the user to select, ranging from meat lover to vegan. And then as you can see, there is a mathematical equation associated with every different answer that a user can select. Uh, this one was actually just lifted straight from the literature because as you can imagine, there was um, a lot of literature on the topic of diet and carbon emissions. Okay, so next steps. So first and foremost, once um, the tool has been developed, we want to collect the data. So the carbon footprint calculator will be housed on the Life Terra website and disseminated through our networks. So we will encourage people, including yourselves, um, to calculate your footprint via the online portal. Next, we wanna analyze the data. So we will look for patterns and themes to draw conclusions about societal behaviors, um, and we will also send a reminder to ask people to recalculate after either a certain time period or maybe after attending a, um, a planting event. And then lastly, we want to empower people to act sustainably. So our main goal, once data has been collected and analysed, is to encourage people to change their behaviours um, in, into a more sustainable way. Okay, I'll now pass on to Arawa, who will discuss the practicalities of why and how to plant trees. Thank you. Thank you very much, Crystal. Very interesting tool. We will be super looking forward to share with all of you. So now I would like to <clears throat> discuss a bit with you um, the idea of planting trees with your pupils, the why this is a good idea and also how you could do it or how uh, we could help you to do this nice activity. So first of all, <clears throat> planting trees with students has several different benefits. The first ones is are maybe the most obvious ones, which are the environmental benefits. So trees, especially in the city or in an urban, uh, pretty urban um, environment, improve the quality of the air and also reduces the noise levels either if you plant inside the school or in your own neighborhood. They also provide shade, which protects us against uh, heat waves and extreme weather, the so-called uh, climate shelters. For example, the city of Barcelona is uh, pushing now in, in several schools to try to make them more resilient to this um, these new conditions of harsh environment due to climate change. Trees also obviously enhance the aesthetics or the aesthetic value of the building and the environment, creating healthier learning environments, which are proved to be more uh, beneficial for, for the learning processes. And finally, of course, they increase the health and the well-being uh, of pupils and also of teachers and the whole educational community. But then also planting trees um, with kids or with students has, uh, has different pedagogical benefits. For example, they are, as Tere said before, they are fantastic learning resource. You could do any sort of project based on science or STEM, but also an arts project. You can, you can study climate change, you can observe and study the, the, the growth of the tree, the seasons and how they change, but also the associated fauna like uh, birds, like butterflies, like pollinators or flowers. So it's really a resource itself. But then it's not only about the, the, the planting and the having trees there, but 
the maintenance and the, the care of the of the trees is also a super powerful tool to develop these skills and um, in, engage children in in this sort of values like taking responsibility for a living thing also be patient because this takes time as Tere said before take uh, ownership or a response um, stewardship of the tree but also work together as a team and cooperate and respect nature others and ultimately have a have a long-term vision for what they are doing we are trying to avoid all this um plant the plant a tree in a day and then that's it but just the opposite and afterwards it's also a, a nice outdoor learning space that trees can provide uh, which increases the creativity and motivation of students what is more, the planting itself of a tree is a fun, hands-on and outdoor experience that gives uh, kids and anyone a rewarding feeling and also a positive uh, memory for their lifetime. So this is probably something that they will learn forever because it's learning by doing. But also it creates this emotional connection between nature and, and themselves and also with themselves, with oneself, which at the the end is a meaningful learning uh, experience and also increases self-confidence. It's like learning by feeling no? and taking really ownership and loving what you are doing. And finally, uh, we think it also increases the interest for natural sciences and for the environment and be more curious about everything and hopefully ins inspires also them for uh, to take um, green projects and get involved in solidarity projects. And ultimately, the social benefits of planting trees, which is obviously the, this action makes a contribution, as Tere said, it's not only about planting the tree, but restoring the ecosystem and also restoring the people and our connection with the earth by engaging the community and, and, and yourself in real climate action. So they also, it's... Um, empowering, I think, um, to engage children in their own future in climate solution that would be would be for the good of everyone and also the planet itself. It's uh, all about this model of think globally and then act locally. So uh, until now, we have presented a bit the general idea and the philosophy behind the LifeTerra project and also some um, details on the importance of trees and and an overview and everything. But now I'd like to focus and narrow down a bit more and see how we can do this and plant trees together. So as you know, probably at this point, uh, the Life Terra project has a strong focus on education and training. Um, we do this uh, through three different strategies, which is educate all generations, then train the trainers, and then plant with the community. So for the first strategy, First thing we have, as you all know, is the Terra Mission. So the, the educational pack you are going to explore here in this MOOC for pupils aged 8 to, uh, till uh, 14 years old. But this is not the only thing. We also plan more activities that uh, will come after the MOOC and will keep you informed about it so that you can also participate and get in, involved. Our train the trainers program uh, is called well, Terra Leaders, that's how we call these empowered volunteers who take the lead in our tree planting events. So really take the step forward and uh, lead an event. So they basically support participants to plant correctly because there is also a whole thing about planting. Uh, we have to, to plant um, in the in the correct way in order to ensure or to maximize the survival rate of the trees we plant. So these Terra leaders, uh, at the end, they make a difference in the community by inspiring others, including your students, for example, uh, to take climate action while also getting in the process knowledge, skills, and also hands-on experience in climate solutions and landscape restoration, as Terry was mentioning before. And the third and main um, thing, activity we do is the, the events or the planting events themselves, as we call them, where we engage the whole community uh, and all stakeholders possible, including schools like yours, but also landowners, also NGOs and local governments, the private sector and the general public. Anyone is welcome to, to, to work together and to join efforts 
to organize this type of activities. And all our planting events are also supported by our Life Terra web app or platform that I will tell you a bit later more in, in detail how what is it about. Uh, it's basically to um, georeference every tree uh, that is planted so we can then follow follow up. So the idea would be this uh, school planting event would merge all these three strategies in one. So for educating all generations, we have the Terra mission that you can explore in the classroom and beyond. Then the trained trainers, we thought the motivated and committed teachers could be these leaders that really want to take the lead and encourage their students to plant together. And finally, the plan with the community would be here, of course, the, the, the school planting event itself. So in order to give you uh, a bit more tips on how you could do this, even though Terry already explained a bit what you have to think about before planting or organizing a planting event, I'd like to stress a few elements that are key for any tree planting activity. So the first thing you need for sure is land, is where we can plant. It can be at the schoolyard or it can be also uh, outside the school in the neighborhood. It can be public land or private land. So in order to find this suitable space where trees are um, uh, suitable and are fit to be there, uh, we recommend you to ask your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues at work and also local decision makers to find these spots where trees could be planted. Like, for example, the local city hall. That's how we also we do it. We, we go to city halls and ask them if they want to plant. They're always super looking forward to use to use sorry, these bare spaces for um, for a new garden for the tree for the city or a, a new forest in, in the surroundings. The first thing you need for sure also is the knowledge. So the right to plant the right tree in the right place. For this, we advise you to get expert advice for species selection. You can ask the university, the landscape school close by and or the biology teacher and just making sure that the species are native and are biodiverse and all the requirements that they mentioned before. But also you can even go further and become an expert together with your students and make a class research about which are the native tree species we could plant, which are the most appropriate trees to plant here and make a whole um, project out of it together with your students. Then you need trees also, obviously. Um, you, for To get the trees, you can go to the local tree nursery, which is where they grow these baby trees. You, we recommend to plant between one and two year old seedlings, which are the bay litteries that you can see there because this is the appropriate size and age for them to really uh, grow well in the soil. And also sometimes you have, depending on your environment, to consider protecting these trees and get protectors. And finally, you need people. So motivated people like your students, even their families, other neighborhoods, uh, neighbors, sorry, or even NGOs, and of course, teachers, yourself, which uh, who will become Terra leaders. And what do we offer? Like, how can we help you? So we have the Life Terra platform, what I mentioned before, to keep track of your trees, because you every tree you plant, then with the platform you take a picture, so you have it there with the coordinates. This is useful to engage your students and the families in, in, in the planting and in climate action eventually, and be part of the Life Terra community, which is a international community. We also offer training materials. The Terra Mission um, topic eight is about trees, but also we have more guides on how to plant step by step that you will find in the resources and even further resources that we could share later on if you take the step of organizing a, an event. We also offer our dissemination channels in social media that we are supported by the European Commission and have an international reach. And also finally, and I think the most important one is to create a legacy that matters. So this activity is a, at the end a meaningful learning tool and a green legacy for your school in the long term. So it's an opportunity for you and also for your students especially to get involved in real climate action, explore the solutions to face climate change and learn about trees, about native species and even meet maybe local experts and build a community. So what we want to tell you is that this is 
We want to facilitate you um, organize your own planting event, and this is for us work in progress. So we are really thinking um, how we can um, help you. Uh, come starting from next year, of course, because there is also a season where you can plant. So usually in the winter, uh, not in the summer. So this could start from next course. Now is the time to uh, think about it and get all, explore all the key elements we were explore, um, discussing: trees, land, people, knowledge, and then later on um try to really start this activity from from next year so um we recommend to check um if life Terra is active in in your country because we are already we have teams in different countries in europe also follow us in social media and sign up to our newsletter because we we keep you posted there once this whole, whole process is ready for you to apply for and and organize a, your own event or your own tree planting event and then take into account that this is, as I said, a work in progress and we'll provide you with more info about more detailed practicalities later on. Finally, I will just um, I would like to to show you uh, briefly how our uh, platform looks. As I said, we try to monitor every tree that is planted to collect data and to engage with the tree with the planting and to make sure that this um, survives and lasts and grows and becomes an adult tree. So for that, we have this tool. This um, it's like a web web app, so you can use your smartphone in a when you go in the field to plant trees. And you after you take uh, you have the year event and you take the picture and you have your tree your your trees. You get this uh, nice dashboard in our uh, well in the Life Terra platform. As you can see, there there is a map where all the trees that have been planted so far are registered. So you can here um, register your own trees, but also adopt trees and also share your trees to your friends and show everyone what you are doing, even including the the students, families, and so on. So here, um, if you go, this is the old tree, okay, all together. But then you can also go to your own trees. Here it says my trees. Uh, in this case, you see 46 because this is the, the trees I planted in this in this season. So this you can see this, uh, this is a big plot. So um, if you go to all trees and zoom in, zoom in, you will see all this plot is planted with trees, but these are the ones that I planted myself. So if you go uh, and click on one of those dots on one of those um, pins, then it shows you the tree, the picture I took of that tree the day I planted it in the field. It says here, I planted yourself, and it gives me also the date when it was, the event in which uh, this picture took place, and also the coordinates or so the location, the exact location where the tree is, so I can always go back to this place and visit the tree and see how it is doing. And also it has here a link with where you can read species Quercus ilex, which is the, the whole moke, the, this specific uh, species, where you can read more information about the, the species itself, about the, the whole moke, and you can also explore and learn about this species together with your students. So that was a um, short overview. We have more materials to share that I'm sure you will be exploring during the MOOC. Thank you again to everyone, and uh, we are looking forward for your questions. Thank you very much, Aroa, Teresa, and Crystal for such an interesting and engaging presentation. The teachers have been very active in the chat. So now, as Aroa said, we move on to the Q&A session. We had more than 120 questions already in the, in the course in advance, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we hope many of these questions were already answered by the speakers during the presentation, but if you have any additional questions, comments, please write them in the chat and we will try to address them, keeping in mind that we have around 15 minutes left for the Q&A. So while teachers are uh, typing the first questions, and maybe we can start by addressing some of the, of the questions posted already in advance in the course. Uh, for example, one question is, how is the process after planting the tree? What happens after that? So uh, you go, Tere, or I go? Uh, yes, I can go. What happens so that the 
Okay, this is a very important time for the for the trees because they are, they have been in the in the nursery living rather well <laughs> with all the watering and all the nutrients. So they, they when you plant them in the field, the trees are experiencing uh, harsh conditions maybe. So it's the time for the for the roots to grow to explore the soil. But okay, when you plant the tree, the tree starts to grow to grow. So it's time for the for the roots to grow, and then mm, maybe also I don't know. Keep growing, keep growing. We guess, but of yeah, course, can, if, the, if the seedlings are, are not good or not very good quality, or the or the weather is very bad for a long time, maybe for more than one month without without rainfall, depending on the on the country, then the the, the seedlings mm, die, <laughs> and we have mortalities. Yeah, well, it is important to, thank you, Tere, for mentioning that. Let me compliment, um, because it is very important to, to, um, to stress that the tree survival in any planting um, action is never 100%. You will always get mortality. That's the natural process. We have also to understand this. This is not a failure. What we try is to use as many strategies as possible to ensure that the trees have, have the... the the maximum chances chances of survival, but this never is a hundred percent, unfortunately. But yeah, this is important to to mention. Also, I like to to stress that we always work with um, landowners, either if they are private per individuals or if they are city halls or big cities. We always sign agreements and uh, also. Uh, discuss before a planting event to make sure that the trees are going to be man maintained. So this um, action, which is very important for the trees, not like uh, just planting it and that's it, but just when we plant it is the, the start, you know, of the thing. So we make sure that um, the trees are well cared and irrigated when it's needed, and we work with landowners and land managers to 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 make this possible. It's not always possible to irrigate if you are in the in the middle of the countryside, but if you are near the school, <laughs> <laughs> much easier. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. We also have people asking in the chat for the Life Terra app. We will share it later in the chat. And if we don't have time for this, don't worry, people, because it's included in the MOOC in the uh, future module that will start on Monday. But we will try our best to uh, also put it in the chat. Now, mentioned in the chat, um, this is not really a question, but I found it a really nice comment. Climate change is a burning issue. Every school should have this project incorporated into their curriculum. This is the most important subject. I don't know what you think about this. I found it really interesting. So I think, of course, it's a, a burning <laughs> issue. And OK, I think uh, for instance, uh, when we have this footprint calculator, this carbon footprint calculator, it's a, it's a way that we can um, make a diagnosis of ourselves. I mean, you can understand how, how are you behaving, how are your impact, how is your impact, and then reduce a little bit. But OK, this is one issue that maybe Crystal can talk a little bit more. But then the, 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 we have also to fight that for the, I guess, this is also, there are socioeconomic reasons and also political issues that <laughs> everyone has to do their best. <laughs> yeah, as my colleagues said, it's not only about planting trees, but um, about reducing emissions and really making a, a, contribution, a, a contribution. So that's why the Terra mission, the educational pack is not just about planting, it's not just about forests or about trees, but we cover uh, a lot of sustainability topics that we can really make as uh, contributions as much as we can in, a, in different ways. So yeah, thank you for the comment. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. I will go back to the course because we had many, many questions. And one of them was, what are the challenges you face when teaching a whole class of children outdoors and on how to plant a tree? Are there any remarkable challenges to share? That's a very interesting question. I'm trying to, to think about the, the, the 
times where we planted with kids, it was really, I, I, I must tell you, the best tree planters ever, the, the most motivated people more than adults mm -hmm. because they are really engaged and especially imagine we have now passed through a pandemic very hard with children being at home for so long so actually when we planted with um, kids it was the very first days they could get out of the school after being for a year with without any outdoor activities so th the challenge i would say it was to keep them calm <laughs> because they were so excited um but I understand also um, the, the important part when we organize these plantings with any sort of uh, participant, adults, kids, doesn't matter, is to plant, as I said before, to plant the tree correctly, in the correct way. Because if you plant it wrong, you miss this out or whatever, it, it's really probable that the tree doesn't survive. So we really stress the importance of plant, planting correctly. And for that, you need uh, a rather small group. So. It's also something to think about if we go in the field to 100 people, doesn't matter the age, but it's more challenging than if we go with 20 people or we have enough adults who are well trained on our um, materials about how to plant a tree and really understand the step by step part because they are really they are they do it really well and they are really enthusiastic, but they also need the attention and the time to get the skills and then no, sorry, the knowledge. So these are the challenges I could share right now maybe it might so complement i don't know yeah this was great I, i'm sure that there are many challenges but also it's really rewarding to finally do an outdoor activity and especially a planting event um, we're going back to the chat because we have many new questions for example after forest fire what steps should be followed to plant new trees so, uh, yeah, I, okay. Um, uh, uh, there are several questions about forest fires uh, because some other ask if it's interesting to plant soon after fires. I would say it depends very much on the on the ecosystem that has been burned, but usually you have to wait for two years before doing any any restoration. Uh, but of, of course only in the case that you want to keep the soil because there is a big risk of erosion, then you do urgent, urgent actions. But dealing with planting trees, we recommend to wait for two years because as soon after the fire, there is a big risk of soil erosion. So you will get worse than the than leaving, leaving the, the, the system um, without nothing. And in addition, we, we uh, sometimes um, forests are adapted to fires, as you know, and there are several species that re-sprout. So you, you, need, you need to leave the system to recover and then to help. And then maybe you are, doing to, you are going to plant other species to make a more resilient tree, uh, forest or to plant some species that have been lost or whatever. But First, wait for two years to look how it's going, the natural regeneration, I would say. Thank you so much. We will keep this two year number. I think it's very relevant and something that at least I didn't know. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, going back to the chat and also actually to the MOOC itself, we had many, many questions, specific questions on which tree can I plant with my class? This is the type of environment that I live in. Now we have also in the chat some questions. How do we know what trees we can plant in our area? Uh, we discussed this a little, but maybe can we give uh, two, three important things to what can we do? How can we start? OK, oh, I, I can start myself, but Aroa has much more experience than me. But I, mm, OK, you know that mm, there is no a unique recipe. <laughs> It very much depending on whether you are planting in the in the countryside, in the nature, or nearby your school, in a peri-urban place, or an, in the or in an urban place. So, as I as I said you before, um, get as much information as you can about the place, uh, about the the vegetation or the the trees you see around, but always using native species. And if you go to the countryside, look for the trees, the, the forest you find, the trees, the dominant trees you get there. Um, if possible, 
try to use also some 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 trees that are coming from maybe a more dry places or more um, warm places like moving some mediterranean trees little bit little bit to the temperate forest because they will survive and maybe they will survive when the when the climate continue getting drier and warmer so but about the trees um, we cannot say plant this and this and this species and this is very important that you keep in touch with the nurseries the people growing 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 the plants because they will also give you a very good advice if they are a good quality nurseries i mean if they are growing trees for the for the, the natural the natural trees the main trees in your area so this that, that could be the the main advice advice and i don't know Aroa, probably you have more ideas I agree with you 100%. Maybe just to stress the fact that we always try to um, encourage you to plant diverse. So not just choose one tree and then start planting a lot, but really think of the mixture of the trees. Um, and also, for example, just to give you maybe a small tip is that um, a, maybe a minimum, okay, you can also plant in the schoolyard where the, the space maybe uh, it's around the school or in a park or, you know, your, your own space. But also you need a, a, a minimum amount of land if you want to make, a, I don't know, a 100 trees planting, which is the average, I would say, number that we cover for a one day tree planting with kids. Just to give you an idea of how, how many or more, or less. these are estimates, of course, and it depends a lot on many, many, many things. That's why, as Tere said, there is no uh, a unique recipe, recipe because also the soil uh, affects um, the how easy or how hard it is to really plant a tree. Um, but yeah, I would say the same. Uh, talk to others. Talk to other the, the the school itself. I mean the the the. the team of teachers at the school and see is exploring your own network to find these experts or these nurseries and local or in, even in the city hall they have technicians they have gardeners and they really have this knowledge and usually is good um, close to every one of us so this would be also our our main advice and maybe I can show you super quickly this baby tree I have here with me maybe you can see it this is a lentis just for you to see how it looks in in real life and I'm trying not to touch the the roots of the tree because I'm also planting it in my own at my own place but this is the trees that we usually plant and the, also the type of trees depends on your own environment it's a really specific um thing so that would be all my answer Thank you so much, both of you. It was very clarifying. And also I would like to remind participants that we will also be sharing the materials, the presentation, so you can see again and, and go over the steps on how to plant a tree and then maybe motivate your students for research uh, and how to plant the right tree in the right place in your area. Now, mindful of the time, we have two minutes left. I would like to maybe ask one more question really quick to all of you. Is there a scientific proof that the idea of hugging a tree has any impact on human life and on the life of a tree? Super quick. I don't know about hugging a tree, but I read a study last year that um, those that spend at least 30 minutes a day in nature um, tend to be significantly happier than those that don't. So the benefits of people spending time in nature is significant when it comes to mental health. Um, the interesting thing as well was that anything above 30 minutes didn't make a big impact, but zero to 30 was a huge impact. So, yes, there are definitely impacts on our mental health. So for sure, they have and the trees have have impact in in our lives. And in the there are scientific papers, very recent scientific papers, talking about the the benefits for the mental the mental health, even. Uh, modifying your blood pressure and so on, so biochemical changes. So, but I'm also sure that the, the I don't know if the tree mm, realized that we are there around there for sure not, but there are some biochemical communication. But uh, in any case, if we take care of a tree, the tree will keep will be alive. You can see when you are practicing at the university and probably all the teachers now because you have a garden in the school. 
if a, a kid or a student take care of the plant, the plant keep alive, even if you are trying to, to die that plant because you are making <laughs> some stresses. So for sure, <laughs> if you are close to a tree, the tree will survive. <laughs> Super, thank you very much. And thank you everyone who joins today's webinar. We have reached 6 p.m. And also a big thanks to our speakers, Aroa Gregory, Teresa Sauras, and Crystal Moore for joining us today and sharing your expertise. It was an absolutely pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very so thank you to you all. Thank you. Thank you sure. for the questions. <laughs> Super. We hope to see you on our next webinar, Outdoor Learning Pedagogy pedagogical approaches next week on the 18th of January, Thursday, also at 5 p.m. Central Europe time. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>